All right, I'm gonna to illustrate to you how to fit a Ruger backstrap or a Colt single action backstrap to a Ruger revolver. Now these come about 30 thousandths wider than the average Ruger frame. So what we're gonna do, just for illustration purposes only, we're gonna screw on the Keith number five backstrap All right, and when you start this, you start the screws with a crack right here, and you'll see this in the instructions, so follow the instructions. So you get both screws started with a little crack there, and then you can pull them up at the same time, because use this ball Allen key, that way you can drive it at an angle, and you don't tighten them, just pull them up, not quite from being snug, All right, there's your back strap on your frame. Now you'll see how the Keith number five back strap, the top of the back strap curves in a radius from about here all the way up to here. Well, here your Ruger frame is lower. So what you have to do is lower this whole area right here and bring it down to this point right here on the frame and then you go straight forward and you got to take some metal off the frame so you'll have a little v-crack right here in the back of this radius here so what you want it to look like when you do this is the frame would end up looking like this on the back see with a groove in it here that makes it look real nice when you fit a keith number five now this won't be necessary with any other of the back straps so anyway, that's the step you'll have right there. We'll lay this aside and we'll start on another frame here that's already been lowered at that area. And we will install your Keith number five like you'd normally get it out of the package. First thing you do, you put the trigger guard or your front strap on, pull the screws up, not quite snug, Put all the screws in it. Now all models you need to check when you put this front strap on to be sure that the front strap is not longer than the frame. Now most of them will either be real close to flush or this little area right here will stick up just a little bit. So what you have to do is set it up in a vise and you file this area down because when you put the grip on, you want this to be a straight line from the bottom all the way up here to the top. So that has to be fitted to that part of the frame before you do anything else. So I'll show you how to do that here in the vise. I like to use a safe edge file. You find this flat area right there and you file that down real careful to the height that you need until it's flush with the frame. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Now that we've matched the trigger guard rear length flush with the frame in this area on both sides, now we're ready to put the back strap on and fit it. Sometimes it's a little bit of a problem. Say it get about two turns started. Once you get it started in the hole where it's going to thread, you can take the Allen wrench out because from now on you'll be using the ball portion to tighten that up. So you pull it up like that, right here. Now you can put the 
screw in the butt which attaches the back strap to the front strap. Now, now we're ready to pull this up. Like I said before, this is shown in the instructions on how to get this screw in there because if you don't do it just like I showed you, you'll have problems. This is where you're using the ball in. See how it's not straight in line? It's a little bit out of a line. That way you can drive that rear back strap screw all the way in. Once you get both of them in, you can tighten both of them up. Don't over tighten it. Be sure your other screws are tight. All right, now that we have the back strap mounted on the frame, we're ready to fit the top of the back strap, which on that other one wouldn't be filed out like that, but we'll go ahead and radius this down right here to where it comes out flush with that, and then I'll show you how I file this in there. So we'll have to go back to the vise and get that job accomplished. Now this isn't near as much problem when you have a regular Colt type back strap that has the external, the ears with the screw on the external side. All you have to do is just file them down to the radius to fit the frame and you got it. But the key number five is the hardest one to fit. So you tighten her up in a vise like that. And you see there's a little hump right here and then here's the line right here that you want to come to. So what you want to do is make a smooth radius from about this area here all the way up to the frame right there. So requires elbow grease. Now anytime you're filing any amount of steel off of anything, generally you file like the edge of it to make you a line so you'll know where to file the rest of the part too. So in this situation here, I'm gonna file a little angle here and radius back to there and that way I know that I can Fall down to that line and around this way on this corner. See, I pull that line down right like that. So that's where I'm going to go to is that spot right there. And I'm going to blend all this together with a nice round radius. As you see, this takes a lot of elbow grease. If you have access to a like a 2 by 48 stand sander, you can sand a lot of this off and then finish it with a file. And we're gonna get this area right here, this notch in the frame, which is this area here. We're gonna finish this up, but this is the area we're gonna be removing on this frame here. This has already been roughed out. Wrap emery paper around the corner of your file. I like to use coarse, like 180 to start with. Remember we're talking about mostly just this groove right here in the back part of the frame itself. Good thing about sandpaper, it'll cut each direction, but when you're filing it, you only file in the forward motion. We can wrap that with 180. Remember, keep your line straight and that curve straight that I was talking about and just blend all this in. We can get it down to 180, maybe as much as 240, and then the rest we can finish this with a buffing wheel when we finish it. I believe that's enough right there.
that's enough for a start. We can get the rest of it out with the emery paper. So what we'll do next then, we're happy with this and the shape of it. Now we can go to fitting the trigger guard or the front strap to the thickness here and then the back of the back strap on each side right there. In order to do that, what we will do, we'll take a power custom frame wrench. This is the handle section of it. If you notice, if you have one, it'll have a little flat piece of metal in there with a quarter twenty screw on it. This is used to hold your grip frame in a permanent position very solid to allow you to file it so the grip frame will be flat and match the frame on the revolver. Now if you'll notice this revolver frame is tapered. It's narrow here than it is here. Keep that same line all the way back here on your front strap the same as the frame and don't get into the frame and destroy any of the writing or the numbers on the side of the frame and this angle here should be the same right here down to here. If you file it just flat like that you'll take more off than you need and you may get file into the recess for the head of your screw. So what I do I put just a little more angle on it not like that, but a little more this way, that way, and I file where I'm not touching this, and this will be just a very slight taper, and I can file it right down to where it fits that metal or touches the metal. Now, it will scratch the bluing. Some people put masking tape on it. They uh, glue on a 3,000th thick piece of shim stock and file it down to that, but generally it's best to figure on re finishing the complete revolver when you fit a back strap. Now there's another thing I do that helps you a little bit as far as speeding it up. Change the filing direction a little bit on this because it's a little easier when you want to take the heavy part of the metal off rotate it around like that. This way we can file crossways. You gotta be careful because there's flat with the frame. This is parallel and this is at an angle. So you hit it there and then you drop this a little bit. Just a few, say five degrees so you do not touch the top strap. Right, that thins that down to where it's a few thousandths above the frame. And then you can get this part. Now generally you will mark the frame doing this. But keep this parallel with the flat of the frame. Follow down flat, just like that. Alright, you see that's about as close as we can get it with a file. Taking care not to blemish the marks on the revolver. Now this is close enough, we can probably finish that with like a 240. And we'll start with a 240 to try it. Wrap the file, and we'll see what we got. All right, that's close enough. We can get the rest of it with a regular buffing job like we're gonna completely refinish the revolver. In that case you'll have pins or plugs in these holes so when you high buff it you won't drag out the round circle of these holes. So we do this to both sides the same way. Figure out what angle you're going to file it at and get it set. Tighten it up. And you're ready to start filing. If you'll notice, this side of the frame is a whole lot closer, or this side of the back strap and trigger guard is a whole lot closer to the frame, so you won't have to file as much off of this side here. 
right, we'll come around on this side and follow the bulk of this area off here. This is probably 30 or 50 thousandths high here and flush right there. So I want to take this off as fast as I can, as easy as possible. So all I do is come over here, file crossways, raise up so you're not hitting the top strap. If you're concerned, you might want to put a little bit of, of masking tape on the top strap here to keep from marring it, but we're going to refinish it anyway. We just don't want any deep scratches or grooves up here. as close as we better do it doing it that way. We we'll have to turn around and get this other side like we was doing a while ago. I can probably get some from this side. You'll also notice working with these Ruger frames, the factory frames, you'll find out they have a little bit of wave in them. They're not always perfectly flat. That's why I usually put just a slight angle on our trigger guard down so I can match that corner and it'll look almost perfect. It's 240, see what we got. All right, that's flush enough for fitting the sides at the present time. You wanna see if we're happy with this curve and with this part right here. Right there, that's pretty good. That's good enough for now. Now next thing we'll do is start working this grip frame. The tool marks in this area right here. In this area right here, see these are, when they're machined, this is a sharp corner and that's a sharp corner. And then they're put into a tumbler to deburr the edges. There'll be a little round edge right here on the corner of the grip frame. I always file these back and take about 20 thousandths off this corner so you can have a real sharp corner there and you won't be able to see much of a line there when you finish the system. What we're going to do is pull this corner back a little bit to get rid of that radius area so it won't be a crack whenever we have the back strap and trigger guard made it together. See that little crack right there? Generally when you get these, this will be square and that'll be a radius and you have to cut this to that radius. Okay, you see the difference in the width of that little crack right there? So by the time we sand this out, radius that, you won't hardly see a crack. It'll just be a little line right there. The next thing we're going to do is polish this area out here and around here and inside the trigger guard these tool marks right there. Now I like to use a die grinder and a oh, half or five eighths inch sanding bob. Usually they're about an inch and a half long. You can start off with a coarse grit like uh, 80 and then finish up with a 120 or a 240. And you can go in there and clean that out real quick all the way around there. Now if you don't have a die grinder, you can take a piece of metal or steel, don't matter whether it's steel or aluminum, split it and put this in your drill press. Most everybody has access to a drill press. And then you put it in the drill press vertically, turn this on, this will roll up and you can go right around there with it, hold the frame and work it around like that. But we'll use the die grinder first. Set it up like that. This is a die grinder. See, that's a whole lot faster than the other way. You, uh, <clears throat> turn it around, do the other side. <laughs> now 
Now if you'll notice these little wavy areas right here, those are hard to get out, especially with this small of a bobbin on the end of the die grinder. So what you have to do is get them out the best way you can, as good as you can. Then you have to go over this with a small flat file in emery paper and you can smooth those little waves out so the job will look almost perfect. What we'll do now, we'll move over to the drill press and I'll show you about using that arbor and we'll finish it up with a little bit finer sandpaper around there. Put this arbor in the drill press. There's split shaft. I'm going to start off with 240. That's about all we need to do right there. Now, now that we have this shiny again, these little waves, we'll go back and put this in the vise and smooth those areas out. And then a piece of emery paper over a flat file and we'll file the side of this flat with emery paper over the file. This area here, remove all tool marks. Flatten this off. And we can get to all this with a regular buffing wheel from here down. So all we gotta do is a little more finish right here and we're ready to fit grips. There's one other thing though, we need to put a little bevel right here on this front corner after we get all this radius polished. And I'll show you how to put a little bevel on this. A lot of our grip frames, uh, sometimes I put that bevel on before they leave the shop, but not all the time. All right, now we're ready to remove those little ripples in the lower part of the trigger housing. You gotta look real close to see them, but if you get the light just right, you'll see them. And it's almost impossible to get all of them out, but you can get most of them out. I use a small file, usually a safe edge, and I lay it right on there and take little short strokes and look at it. And you'll see it'll hit the high points. Very carefully you get those little ripples out of it. This will get the worst part. And you can hold, get the light just right and look at the light and you'll see them wave. And that's where you want to file the tops of them flat so everything's level. When you get to where you think you got them, you can try maybe a little 240 around the file. Not too bad, I got a little one right there and I got a couple of them right there. That's good enough. Now, where the screws go in here, your two bottom screws, you don't want any tool marks on those flats. Now's a good time to get them. That's with 240, we'll go over it with 400. All right, now you see these sides right here? We need it laying on the side to get these sides because we can't really work sideways and see what you're doing. So that's good enough for this area here and this area. The butt of the grip, we'll save that so when we fit grips, we'll fit the grips right down flush with this metal and that'll take care of that area when we fit grips. I'm gonna take it out of the vise. Look at it. Well, I still got a pretty good one right there. A lot of the factory revolvers, if you look at them, they sometimes look like waves, especially the spaghetti guns. 
Very few of them have a nice smooth line like the old original Colt revolvers had. We'll check it over again before we get ready to do any high buff on it. But this will take it down to where you can start buffing with about a 240. And then finish it up with a 400. And then stainless steel roots for a real bright finish. Put this in the vise at about a 45 degree angle this way. Remember I told you about that little angle right here in the front? We're going to put just a slight bevel on here, taking care not to get in and put a groove on the front end of the trigger housing. We'll put that little bevel on there so it's nice and even with the corners. Right there, that's all there is to that. Now what we're going to do is put it back on the revolver and we're going to flatten this area right here with emery paper and a file because usually there's machine tool marks right here on both sides and you almost have to file them out. This one's not too bad but that's the way it should be done. So we'll put this back on the frame. Alright, there we are there. Now we're ready to get these sides flat so we'll go back to the barrel vise handle process again. Sometimes it's better to use a six inch file here than one this small, but this works. You just have to go over it more. Up in the crack right there where the where it meets right there in the crack, that's where you want to get it because you can get it out here in this area with a buffing wheel. That's good. Turn it over and do the other side. Get the little tool mark out of it right there in that area there. Right down there at that area. Take some emery paper over the file. That's good enough. That's ready for the buff now. So what we can do We could actually, if we wanted to, we could fit a grip to it right now. now. This is the way they come machined. You have a hole here that's drilled and tapped right there, but it's not a through hole. It's only 200 deep. The profile of it is machine wise as close to the frame as we can get as possible and a little bit oversized. So what you have to do, if you want a perfect job, you want to fine tune or fit this perfect in this area here. This is where it fits up against the frame. So you see it's a little bit of a crack right there so what we'd want to do is is probably it's the corner right here. Round that corner and take a little that off and a little bit that so it'll go up there. So this has to fit this area perfect and you fit both grips the same way this side over here. You fit it right there too. So that's the first thing you do is be sure that grips on there in the right location. Clamp it on there with a the machinist clamp and be sure everything's in line and right. And then you spot this hole right here. You drill it into this clear through here into your grip panel. Now you only have to go in about 150 thousandths deep. Don't go too deep and drill through your grip panel. So anyway, you spot that hole for that. And then you do the same thing for the grip on the other side. 
See, it'll fit on there like that, and you got it clamped. Go in there with a drill bit and drill it, spot it, and drill it down real easy to the right depth so you can put the pin in it. And when you do that, here's what you'll end up with a set of, I'll show you these fitted grips that I've already done. See, they'll go in there like that, real close fit. The pin will go in there. See how it went in like that? The other grip goes over the top like this. When it lines up with the base pin, it should snap on right there. Now these are standard escutcheons, which is these right here. That's a 540 screw with a threaded escutcheon on one end and a countersunk escutcheon on the other. So I don't use threaded escutcheon. What I use on this one side All right, remember I told you about these two threaded holes here? I use a brass set screw. I drill through it and tap it to the 540 thread that this screw here size is. And then I put these in the holes and epoxy them in there. And then I, all I do is find where this end of them marks this grip here on this other side, which will be inside that hole, and most of the time it'll be right in the center of that hole, right here, this hole here. Mark this, drill through it, turn it over, countersink it for your scutcheon to be a little below flush, and all you gotta do is, after the epoxy dries and these are seated in, put the grip frame on, you have to shorten your screws, whatever length it is, and screw it together just like that. I like to use the two screws using these two threaded parts here. And we will have available those set screws with the 540 threads in the end of them. If you need them and want to go that way, just call me. Now when you do that, you can tighten it down. I like to line up the screws. If this was a finished job, I'd line them screws up. Time them so they're both the same direction. But anyway, there's your finished grip. Now what I did with our grips, see they're oversized. So you have to hand sand all these down flush with the metal. And that way you can get a perfect job. There's one thing when you're sanding, the wood is softer than the metal. So if you sand this way, you'll dig into the wood more and it'll make, it'll make the wood lower than the metal. So you sand across the metal towards the wood that way and that way it does not make the wood smaller than the metal. Then when you get all done, you can check everything and if the metal is a little higher than the wood, you can go back over and buff that metal down to where it'll just be a perfect fit on the back. And when you get on the bottom, these grips here will be sticking up, probably 50 thousandths. So if you're lucky enough to have a flat belt sander, a table sander, all you gotta do is hold it straight down like that and sand the bottom of the grips flush with that. And then after you sand the bottom of the grips flush, I like to put a little angle on them, see? right like this angle here and there. Leave a little eighth inch that's flat right there. And that gives it a nice look. So that's the way you fit grips. If you use these impregnated grips, that's what these are here. And you'll see I didn't do anything to them. All I did is sand them out with 400 paper. And then I lightly buffed them on a clean buffing wheel. And that's the finish right there. If you do a real good job, you'll end up like this sample revolver is. This revolver here. See how nice those grips fit on it. Got that bevel, two screws holding it on. 
When you get all done, you'll have something like that that you can be proud of. If you have any questions, give me a call. I'll be willing to help you all I can with your project. Good luck to you. Thanks.